Okay, so in this uh, video about IMF, I want to give you an example of how to make predictions of the three properties I talked about in the previous video, which is melting point, boiling point, and viscosity. Uh, how to make predictions about this property based on the intermolecular forces that exist in that particular substance. As you can imagine, a uh, general uh, correlation is that the stronger the IMF, then the higher the melting point, the boiling point, as well as the viscosity would be for that particular substance. So generally speaking, if you want to apply this idea of using IMF to predict uh, the strength of these properties when you're comparing, let's say, two, three different substances together, generally speaking, you would have to draw the Lewis structure. The reason for this is because it helps you visualize what kind of bonds exist there. And once you see the type of bonds, particularly the covalent bonds, it will allow you to understand whether the molecule is polar or nonpolar, and if it's polar, whether it has hydrogen bond or whether it has dipole-dipole interaction. So that's really important to, to do that first before you can determine the type of IMF that's present. Once you have the IMF for each of the molecule, you can then rank them, uh, again, based on whether the, the IMF itself is stronger Let's say, for example, if you're comparing hydrogen bond to dipole-dipole. But remember, you also have to look at the size of the molecule. So if one molecule is really large uh, and the other molecule is really small, then the much larger molecule will uh, have a much stronger IMF compared to the smaller molecule. And then at the end, once you uh, square out all of these different factors, you can then determine which one is likely to have the highest melting point, boiling point viscosity compared to all the other ones. So here's an example of a problem uh, where it says you have to uh, place the following substances in order of increasing melting point. As I said earlier, the first thing I would do is draw the Lewis structure of all of these uh, compounds and try to categorize what kind of interactions exist in each of these uh, molecules or ionic compounds. So here's the Lewis structure of all those four uh, species I gave in the previous slide. And the reason I do this is now I can see a little bit more clearly what kind of interactions actually occur for each one of these molecules. You can see here you have a covalent bond between hydrogen and N, N being one of those species that's electronegative enough to generate a hydrogen bond. So then I know there's going to be a hydrogen bond existing between in ammonia. Okay. When I look at CH4, I remember that CH is a nonpolar bond. As a result, CH4 is a nonpolar molecule. So since nonpolar molecule, the only type of interaction that would exist there is London forces. I look next at NH4Cl. Well, NH4Cl is sort of unique because it's actually an ionic compound. And ionic compound means that there's interaction between ions. So you have this strong interactions, which we call an ionic bond. And then lastly, we have this molecule where there is a nonpolar component CH here, but there's also a polar bond existing. CCl is a polar bond if you look at the electronegativity difference between carbon and chlorine. And as a result, this molecule is somewhat polar. It's not very polar, but it's not also a nonpolar molecule because it has that polarity and the pol polar part is not involving hydrogen the interaction that exists here must be a dipole-dipole interaction. So when, once I add all of those interactions in here, then I can rank them. Obviously, in this case, the ionic bond is actually the strongest interaction, so that's going to be the one that dominates, followed by hydrogen bond, which is A in this case, followed by your dipole-dipole interaction, which is D, and then the weakest one of them all is your LDF. And this makes sense, by the way, if you actually look at the state of matter, let's say for all these species at room temperature, you'll find that this one is a solid. So that means that, of course, it's the strongest interaction. So it's holding them together very tightly. So it becomes a solid. And then you look at this one is a liquid gas sort of mixture at room temperature. And then these other two are gas. All right, now I want to do a second example of a problem. Also, in this case, it's asking for arranging the following substances shown here in order of increasing boiling point. Okay, so very similar to the previous problem, we'll have to start with our Lewis structure, which I already did here, okay? 
And then what I'm looking at here, if you see, is that this molecule and this molecule is very similar to each other. They all just have CH bonds, which remember are nonpolar bonds. So in other words, both of these are nonpolar molecules. So they both will have London forces. This one is contains a, a number of CH bonds as well, but also contains a couple of CF bonds. And remember, CF bonds are polar bonds. So in, this molecule would be comparatively more polar than either one of these molecules. Since it's more polar, it would then have dipole-dipole interaction. So if I have to rank this in terms of strength of intermolecular forces, this will be the strongest one. And then between these two, I'm going to pick this one as the second one because that one is a larger molecule. Because remember that when you're larger, your intermolecular forces is also stronger because you have more of them per molecule. Okay. So this one would then be the weakest one of them all. So in terms of increasing boiling point, B would have the highest boiling point, and then C would be in the middle, and then this one would have the lowest boiling point. So A is uh, less than C, less than B, which is exactly what I have here in the answer. Okay. So hopefully these two examples allow you to um, see how we can apply the concept of intermolecular forces to predicting some physical parameters of uh, molecules and ionic compounds.